Hello and welcome to Eliathon's 100 gig uh, Stratix 5 GX interop demonstration video. Uh, my name is Alan McDade and I'm responsible for sales and marketing here at Eliathon. Uh, the purpose of today's demonstration is to show interoperability between Eliathon's standard 100 gig uh, transponder and muxponder technology and the uh, Altera Stratix 5 uh, based FPGA. Uh, that's also using the Anritsu MD1260A tester. The diagram on your screen now shows the hardware setup for today's demonstration. The FPGA platform used for the demo is a Stratix 5 GX 100 gig development board. This card has a 5S GX EA7N device on board giving us access to a number of 10 gig capable transceivers. Inside the FPGA, we have implemented a 100 gig MUX Sponder reference design, which transports 10 by 10 G client signals in the OTU4 payload. For this demo, we are only transporting 10 gig E client signals. As today's demo is focused on interop with the Altera FPGA, and the Anritsu tester, we do not need to connect any client-side test equipment. Instead, we have implemented a frame counter and 10 gigabit E synthetic client generator within the FPGA. On the line side, we have the Anritsu MD1260A tester, which is configured in OTU4 mode. The box has a Finisar optical CFP module installed, allowing us to test the OTL 4.10 interface and all the associated functionality in the FPGA. This module is connected to the Altera card via an optical cable and another Finisar 100G module. Finally, we have a terminal interface that allows us to monitor the errors, stats and defects at all layers of the design. The diagram on your screen now shows the architecture of our 100 gig MUX Bonder. As mentioned earlier, we do not have any client-side test equipment connected. Instead, we are implementing an FPGA-based frame counter and 10 gig E client generator. Although the 10 gig client mapper used for this demo is only supporting 10 gig E, it can support all of the popular client types such as 10 gig E, OC192, STM64, OTU2, and Fiber Channel. The 10 ODU2s from the client mapper connect to Eliathon's ODU2 to ODU4 mapping core, which in turn forms a single ODU4 and passes this to the OTU4 framer. The ODU4 mapper core uses the standard GMP mapping technique of multiple 1.25 gig time slots to multiplex the client into the ODU4 payload. The OTU4 Framer Core provides standard framing, scrambling, detection of errors, and adds or drops the overhead. The Framer connects to our standard GFEC encoder decoder block, which delivers 6 dBs of gain while consuming 7% of the frame overhead. The core provides full stats, which are corrected and uncorrected bits, blocks, and codes. While this demo uses a standard GFET core, Eliathon can also provide an enhanced FET core, which delivers 9.35 dBs of gain for the same 7% frame overhead. On the OTU4 side, the design implements an OTL 4.10 interface, which supports up to 1024 bits of SKU. This incorporates 10 11.18 gig SERDES with individual lane framing, SKU adjustment, and reordering. Finally, we have a UART based interface, which allows us to control and monitor the design via our terminal. Okay, so let's move on now with our demonstration. 
So we'll start by looking at our design in the Aliathon 2 and Ritsu direction. So if we look at the stats page here that's been showing on the, uh, on the screen, we can see our physical interface uh, feedback, we can see our OTU4 layer, the OPU4, the ODU4 that's contained, the GMP mapping. Uh, in this case, the, the single ODU2E that's being uh, uh, investigated and, and, and it's associated single client signal. Uh, what I mean by that is that the tester uh, only looks at eight of the 80 time slots or one of the 10 uh, client signals. Uh, so at the moment, we're looking at the client contained within time slots 4, 14, 24, etc. Uh, the Aliathon design, however, is sending 10 synthetic Ethernet client signals. So to prove that, we can look at uh, another set of, uh, of time slots and therefore uh, another 10 gig E client signal. We OK that. We get some brief errors as the, as the tester switches over. Uh, we can clear those by resetting the counters. And there we have uh, green lights across the board. Uh, the one exception to that, and you can see the alarm here, is uh, TCM at the ODU4 layer. Uh, for this demo, we're not using TCM, and that's why it's been reported in the tester. So we've looked at, at two different uh, client signals. If we now uh, inject uh, some noise, some errors from the Eliathon side and watch those captured in the, in the tester. So what we're going to do, we have a terminal interface into the registers of the design and we're going to write to a location uh, that allows us to switch on or switch off the OTU framing and that will cause the uh, Anritsu to report an error. So if we first of all look at the location, which in this case is 204, uh, we can see there that the register is clear, all zeros. If we write uh, a value to that, in this case 2, we can see as the tester reports uh, loss of frame, and we can read that location and see the value present. Uh, we can reset that. Uh, read that again, we see it's all zero. Uh, and in the tester, if we clear those historical counts, we can see that we're fully framed up to the incoming, uh, incoming signal. Okay, so that's all the uh, tests in the uh, Eliathon 2 and Ritsu direction. Uh, if we now flip that and look at it in the other direction and start to inject some errors from, uh, from this side. Again, because we have a, a terminal interface, it's quite difficult to, to graphically show uh, the results of that. Uh, what I can do is, is inject a BIP uh, and show you the, um, the location of that register and the BIP uh, being reflected. So if I start by uh, latching the values and then reading the location, we can see there it's all zero. And if we go into our uh, errors, in this case we've set it to SMBIP at the OTU4 layer. We OK that, we inject the, uh, the error. So we latch the value of those registers and then we read that location again, and we can see now that uh, the design is reporting a BIP, a BIP error. Uh, so we switch off the uh, error, and again we latch the value, read the location, and we can see that it's reset back to, back to zero. So we could carry on and do that. So we have registers set up for all the different uh, errors and defects in the design. Uh, we could look uh, at all the values through the uh, OTU4, ODU4 layer, uh, ODU2s, etc. Uh, we'll skip that, however, uh, and we'll jump right down to the Ethernet layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a live stream from the Anritsu and we'll look at some frame counters in the, in the FPGA. So again, before I, uh, before I turn the stream on, uh, we can look at the counter locations. 
And we can see there that location 2040 is set to, to all zeros. Uh, if we set the stream running and we latch that location again and read, we can see a new value. And again, if we latch and read again, we see a different value. We can look at uh, another location and uh, another counter for another 10 gig client. So 2140. If we latch that to clear, first of all. And we can see that location 2140 is set to zeros uh, and it's empty, the counter. If we set the stream off again, latch the value, and then read the location, we can see the counter beginning to accumulate. Again, if we latch that value again, read the location, and we can see a different value. Uh, that concludes our demonstration. That's the end of our demonstration video today, and we hope you found that useful. Uh, to view Aliathon's other products and services, go to www.aliathon.com and to contact us and discuss your requirements, go to aliathon.com and click the Contact Us tab at the top of the page. Thanks for watching.